Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Auxilium, presented by Daryl. Uh, I'm Peter, uh, as always, with uh, the lovely Anine. And today we're joined by Julie and Jackie, who are going to give us some insights into another aspect of the recruitment industry that is not IT. So uh, over to you guys. Who are you and uh, what do you do? Hi, good morning. My name is Jackie Zardel. I am MD of Prison Placements. And to all the aspiring CAs out there that don't necessarily want to become accountants and bean counters, mm -hmm. I thought I'd start off by telling you my story. So my story goes way back when I decided I was going to do the CA route. I felt that it was going to provide a good platform for opportunities just in general. And I did my articles at PKF and thereafter I decided I wanted to get into something to do with people and during my articles I did see a gap in that a lot of the recruiters out there didn't quite have the depth of understanding when recruiting different people within the finance area. So, you know, as a CA, you can go into finance, you can go into ops, you can go into product, you can go into entrepreneurship. There were so many different avenues and I approached my audit firm then, PKF, to start prison placements after my articles. At the time, I also headed up their graduate recruitment and I was very involved in, you know, recruiting their trainees uh, nationally, actually, for all eight offices then. And at that point in time, I just said to my directors and partners that we've got the supply of CAs coming through, we've got the demand from our clients looking for financial managers, financial directors, accountants, etc. And Prison Placements was born back in 2006. So I think, you know, we are very niche in terms of our space, in terms of our offering. I think our networks are quite unique in terms of the pool of candidates. And um, just want to talk a little bit about, as I said, the CA route. I mean, I, I did do the CA, I did do my board, and then went into something completely different. And I think, you know, that is the point with, with choosing the CA route. There is just so much out there. It just provides such a, an amazing platform so, for so much opportunity. And I mean, of course, once you do your, your BCom and your honors, you then go straight into a job. You do your three years of articles in an internship um, type position. So at that point, your options are really your tip versus your top in terms of your articles. Uh, your training inside public practice would be your auditing firms, your big four, your fifth tier and your smaller firms. And then your training outside public practice would be in commerce, in the banks, um, where your candidates don't necessarily want to go the auditing route and feel that they'll get more commercial exposure and experience going into the corporate world. So, you know, at that point, it's quite personal as to which route someone wants to do, but it's a great way, as I say, to really follow a career path that will give you the stability, the longevity, and also the marketability. Um, I'm sure most of you know there's, there's also the SAPA articles, which is also a route to go, which is completely different to the CASA profession. And there, you know, your price points are very different. So depending on where someone wants to actually market themselves, A, in terms of price point, and B, in terms of where they want to be one day, they would obviously depend, they would choose either the SACA route or the SAPA route. Um, what I also wanted to say is what is a great way in deciding, you know, what, what route you want to go to when you're choosing your articles is that you can do VAC work during your studying. So I did VAC work at a big four during my studies. I did VAC work at a fifth tier firm. And for me, I just felt that one day I did want to own my own business. I did want to become an entrepreneur. I knew that I wasn't going to ultimately end up as a financial manager or financial director. I wanted to be in business with people. And that's why I did choose a fifth year. So as I say, to all the um, aspiring CAs out there that don't want to be bean counters and, and accountants, there really is so much to offer in terms of opportunities. I think I mentioned at the beginning, you know, whether it's corporate finance, private equity, um, operational products, client services, 
I think the CASA degree is very much sought after, both locally and abroad, and it is just a great platform um, for amazing opportunities out there in the market. So once again, prison placements, very unique, um, very niche. Our networks are quite different from a lot of recruiters and headhunters out there, only because of my background and because of where I come from. So people that I did article with in terms of candidates are now my clients. Um, my clients are now my candidates. My partners are now, you know, candidates. They want to get out of audit into commercial roles. So from that perspective, I think we do have quite a unique, unique network of people. And um, I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, Julie, who will talk more about how to market yourself in terms of both candidates and client perspective. Super. Thanks, Jack. So um, at Prism Placements, we, we do a lot of work with uh, the financial uh, candidates, but we also focus on also the commercial sector. So a lot of our clients also give us opportunities to work on uh, positions that are maybe not financial inclined. So what we're finding in the market is a lot of candidates at the moment are not investing enough in themselves. And we wanted to also make it very clear to uh, candidates, this is the perfect time to market yourself. This is the perfect time to give yourself an opportunity to put your best foot forward. So just a couple of points that we've picked up over the last couple of weeks during COVID and um, the opportunity to uh, obviously upskill yourself as a person and brand yourself in the market. So here are a couple of points, do's and don'ts, just to help yourself. So when looking at a CV, we often find people leave out information. Crazy thing, they leave out matric. Why not put matric in? Even if you've got a degree, even if you've got your CA, even if you've got your MBA, matric is important. People want to see, have you done matric? It's very important. Um, contactable information. You, you can't believe how many people we have come across where contacts are not available on their CV at all. So make yourself contactable. Um, CVs need to be in chronological order. If you can't see where this person's come from or where they're going, you can't really determine what the, the value is that they're gonna bring to a company. So please put your CV in chronological order. Grammar and spelling. Cannot tell you how many mistakes we find on CVs. And it's a very big indicator of the person's quality and what they are prepared to put into their CV. Um, clients are asking more and more, they want to see original CV. So it's very important you show that you can spell, use spell check. Um, achievements is a very, very important aspect that clients are now looking for. The little things that they look for. Have you got distinctions in metric? Your degree, did you do cum laude, dean's list? Um, did you pass your exams first time? Did you um, do your board exams first time? Were you head girl, prefect? Colors for sports. Did you get a bursary for any of your uh, qualifications? Put an achievement in. It's okay to blow your own horn and show the value of what you have done in your career. Um, it's also important to show your strengths. So if you've done something of value in your current company or previous company, show the value of what you've done. You've saved the company money, you've streamlined process, anything that helped the business because companies like to see the impact that you've had on a company. LinkedIn. Um, very important that you stipulate your current status. A lot of candidates are still saying they are employed when actually they're not or they're on a contract. Make yourself researchable so that people are able to headhunt you correctly. Don't waffle in your CV, stick to the point. Don't copy and paste your job description. Put in your CV what your current role is. It's very important to show the value of what you have done. Um, most people, have two or three different versions of their CV. So yesterday I had a very big discussion with a candidate. Do I have a three page CV? Do I have a one page CV? Do I have a 10 page CV? To be honest, it's what the clients want. So I say to candidates, have one or two different versions, a short version that people want, a medium version and that extra long 30 page version. But make sure you have enough detail of the very last three positions so companies can see what you've done in the last three roles and reasons for leaving are also very important. Um, okay, a picture. <laughs> very important, if you are putting a picture on your CV, it is recommended that you do. Do not make it too personal. You do not need to show your wedding picture. You do not need to show a picture of your family or your kids. It's gotta be a professional picture because this is, again, your brand and what you're putting out in the market. 
same with LinkedIn. Please make sure the picture is professional. It's not you playing your guitar in the valley somewhere. It's got to be something professional. Um, on social media, it has become paramount that you make sure when you are searched, you are clean in the market. Companies are doing more and more social checking to see what your background is, what have you posted on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. If there's anything uh, biased, racist, sexist, they will not touch you with a 10-foot pole. Be careful if you're posting on a public platform. What are you saying? Be careful if you're putting pictures up, you're not standing on a table showing that you are drunk out of your mind. Companies are viewing this. So it's important your CV reflects your brand. And we are seeing it more and more that candidates are not putting enough effort into their CVs. So, you know, at PRISM, we often send out a, a formatted CV, which helps the candidates. But at the end of the day, it's also up to you to make sure that you're presenting yourself in the best possible light. So yeah, that's just a good couple of points for candidates. I think it's a great time right now to fix your profiles, to fix your brand out there, upskill yourself, we're more than happy to give advice and help wherever possible and obviously help wherever you know you feel you're shortfalling um but mm -hmm. it's a really good time right now to help yourself yeah thanks, thanks so much Jules. it's it's very interesting that you point out the brand because it's something that peter and i are obviously very passionate about is putting yourself out there in the right light what i'd like to know from your side is during this time, have you guys seen an uptick in certain roles, certain demands? What sort of skills are currently being asked for within your space? Jax? Okay. So obviously, you know, when things shut down on the, the 27th of March, I think April, May was pretty much static. I think companies were very anxious, very skeptical. It was almost like the end of the world was was here and nearly every single role was coming to an end i would say pretty much from the beginning of june there's been a huge shift and a huge change of gears almost in companies taking a long-term view and realizing the end of the world isn't here and they do need to invest in good people so we've had quite a lot of roles open up i would say mostly in finance um, you know, we've got one or two kind of your digital marketers, your CTO type roles coming through, but very much your, your finance positions, both replacement roles, where just from market movement, people are leaving for either something better or people are immigrating, mostly to New Zealand, of course, <laughs> and, you know, vacancies are opening up. Um, but besides your replacement roles, there's quite a few roles that, um, you know, were on hold kind of end of March that are now being resurrected. And as I say, I think companies are taking a long-term view um, in terms of, of carrying on and investing in good people. So I think we are also very fortunate that finance is our forte. And in terms of that finance is often the heartbeat of the company. You know, whether you've got your finance or CA people in finance roles or in ops roles or in commercial or strat strategic roles, they are very much wanting your CAs and your good finance people at all levels really. So I think we've been very blessed in that space. I think other industries are taking more of a knock, but I do believe that we are slowly gaining traction and that there is hope and that there is positive um, outlook out there. Julia, do you That's, agree with that? Anything to add? Yeah, and I, I agree. And I think there's a lot of good people now in the market due to retrenchments and, you know, uh, I think it's an important time to help people out in the market and to try and see what we can do to, you know, make things better for them. Yeah. What's nice about your industry is that quite often you can easily display your performance in the form of yeah. numbers, money saved, uh, efficiency improved, etc. Right. Um, however, what has struck me is that, you know, the, the, the branding and the self image uh, and choosing what brand you want to put out in the market is ubiquitous. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter what role you're in everyone actually needs to become a marketing and branding expert within of themselves right. and uh, the first sales job that you do is selling yourself to a, a prospective boss mm, absolutely. absolutely it's really important to be in the space where you are aware of what you're putting out there we don't live in an age anymore where my facebook is personal my twitter is personal especially as these social media checks are becoming more and more popular 
you sort of need to be a little bit more curated. And perhaps if you do want to have a personal profile, really dig deep into those privacy and security settings as well. Um, I'd be curious to see in the next year or so how this is going to be influenced by Poppy, whether we'd still be allowed to do this sort of thing, but that's obviously a decision for the courts. Um, but it's very good advice to sort of just be a little bit more curated with what you're putting out there. But thank you so much, Julie. Thank you, Jackie. It's been superb sure. chatting with you guys. Um, is pleasure. there anything that's up and coming from your side that you want to share with the community? I think our biggest thing is, um, you know, we, we, we just want to share that, you know, opportunities are out there. On our LinkedIn Prism uh, site, we often advertising. And I think, you know, you just, I want, I want to implore to candidates that they need to be uh, open to looking at every avenue to try and apply themselves. I don't think people do that. And um, I say often, follow your, your, your websites, follow your companies, because a lot of you know, agencies advertise everywhere except on their websites themselves. So go to your LinkedIn, go to your PNET, um, yeah, and just put your best foot forward. I think that's very important. Is LinkedIn the best place for, for people to get hold of you guys or are there, are, are there better channels? No, LinkedIn is our platform. So we've got our uh, Prism placement uh, page there. So everyone can go on there, follow us. We put all our adverts on there, any great articles that are happening at the moment. It's, a, it's our tool that we uh, put out to market to allow people to apply to us. So with pleasure. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys.